Welcome back to another Agency Connect one-on-one pandemic year three, I guess. Here we are. Uh, welcome. We have Rob Binder from the Binder Group. I'm Senior Shah, President of the Cloud Software Association and CEO of AppBind. I'm so happy to have Rob here because he has one of the more interesting stories. Uh, he's a designer, a pixel guy, an Ill- a painter guy, ended up in digital through a series of un- unfortunate life decisions, I'm sure. Please introduce yourself, Rob. Thanks, Sunil. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. My name is Rob Binder. You got my name correct. Most people call me Binder, but because you have AppBind. That's right. So that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So yeah, my background, I went to art school and when I went to college, I didn't even own a computer, but it seemed like a good thing to learn when I finally graduated. So I taught myself desktop publishing. I went through that whole, that whole crazy bubble in the early nineties, late eighties, early nineties of learning desktop publishing, working with illustrator 88 and Quark Express 1.0 and went through that whole process, started doing a little bit of interactive design, mostly CD-ROM, like CD-ROM interface design. I was working for a small agency that was doing digital press kits for movies and we were putting them on CD-ROMs, Macromedia style (laughs) back in the old days. And, and that was really cool. And one day I went into my boss's office and I said, you know, I really think we should put these press kits on the internet. Like, why are we making CD-ROMs and sending them out? And his reply was, yeah, the internet will never work. It'll never work. It's too slow. CD-ROMs are perfect. (laughs) And a week later, I got a, a friend of mine called me with a job offer to art direct a startup website. This was in 1996. And I took, please tell me it was a pet site. It was not, it was a, it was an odd little project. It it was called celebrity sightings, which sounds like a terrible URL, but it was a, it's like teen beat. It was a teen celebrity. You're in LA. So it makes sense to me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was all the teen stars in the nineties. It was their fan club. Took a huge pay cut to start working on that website and, and it was worth it. That, that project turned into a, the company we were working with, we were the front end, we were doing the design and our development company, we ended up merging to become a full service web agency. And that was awesome. So that was like the nineties and that was first generation websites. We were designing very huge, very expensive e-commerce, mostly e-commerce websites for companies like Foot Locker, like the Foot Locker family of brands and quite a few other um, really big projects. They would take a year and a half, two years to build. And they'd be like a million dollars. That was really fun, but that crazy time ended in a crash, <laughs> as we all probably remember. And I became self-employed in, in 2001. And I started freelancing as a, as a web designer. And at the time there weren't too many web designers and nobody was, they weren't teaching in school, but I had a lot of experience building these really designing these very large data driven consumer oriented websites. And that was great. And I, um, I did really well doing that. And I did a little bit of other UI design, but I was a, uh, I was a very busy freelancer and eventually I grew to the point where I incorporated turned it into a real business and started bringing on contractors. To this day, we have been a remote based contractor based small agency. So this is actually my, my 20th year. And I can't believe 20 years have gone by so quickly. Thanks for taking me to yeah. memory lane myself. I remember <laughs> my background, many people don't know was in publishing uh, when I was a teenager, but that's the yeah. internet got me the job and I was worked in a newspaper as well. And I remember all these tools. But what blew my mind too, I'm younger than you slightly, but I grew up with the computers and the publishing industry together. And maybe this is always what has been in my head that as much as you start with, with the visual side of marketing, but what has turned out to be the case is marketing is mostly the tech side of things because we live on the internet. It's a giant marketing machine. And if you're not machine oriented, then you're not gonna get the marketing. And this is where I had this epiphany over the holidays, like, what is this podcast going to become? And it's really, we're talking to digital agencies. And if you can't get the digital under control in 2022, you're not going to get the agency under control. And I think a lot, so many of us are struggling with the digital side, as much as we think we're experts, it's still quite a confusing landscape in, in the subscription 
era. And that's what, well, let's get into it. Like, so you are a designer, but now you've taken on a marketing automation CRM. Tell me a little bit about the tech practices you're doing, the clients you have, and then we can talk about like, who's your, who's your, who's, what's been your best experience working with a digital partners or ecosystem? Yeah, sure. So we, my, my clients have really changed over the years, but right now I'd say the last, I don't know, seven or eight years, we've really been focusing on B2B manufacturers, distributors, a couple other, they're all B2B. Everything is B2B that works well for us. And I have clients, I have a very large commercial laser based in Los Angeles and Las Vegas. I have a lighting distributor, commercial lighting distributor. I have a commercial furniture distributor, a handful, a handful of clients like that. We don't have a huge stable. So we maintain about seven to 10 clients a year for the most part. We expand into a, a couple other complementary fields like professional services, or I, I do a lot of work with a company called Semtech, which is a microchip manufacturer and they, that's really w web design for the most part, but your clients are like technically technical, but they require you for do internet marketing because they're not, let's say marketing savvy. Is that right? Some of them are quite marketing savvy and most of them are not at all. And we actually operate as almost a fractional outsourced marketing communications, strategic and tactical team, helping them representing their full marketing effort. And that, that's a really interesting way to engage with my clients because especially I think in manufacturing, I, I think it's not the most sophisticated when it comes to, uh, marketing, um, and digital for that matter. So the bar is kind of low and we can hit a lot of really great balls quickly out of the gate for them, but it's also really fun to, to grow those businesses with them and, and apply these best practices and, and great software and watch that business transform. And it really, it's just, it, that's my, that's, I enjoy that the most actually is getting a company started on with doing real marketing and then watching their reliance on these great digital tools like CRMs, right? Like things that they may not be using very well, really transform the way they do business and, and growing with them. This is the thing, right? And they're relying on you to take care of the marketing for it, for them. And you're the expert, but what, what's the joy? The joy is being their partner. And some people, we say a lot of agencies, yeah, we're going to be your partner, but to be honest, if you actually truly get to know your clients as people, it's such a pleasure in life to see so like help so many people establish their dreams. That's what I always liked being a contractor is seeing the smile oh, yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. I think there's a lot of agencies running around saying, we partner, we're your partner, we're your partner. That's not really true. Partnerships are not just one, one organization pays another organization. That's yeah. not necessarily a partnership, yeah. right? So I don't throw that word around very um, easily when it comes to my clients. Some of my clients are clients. Some of my clients are partners. And I've worked with them for 10 or 15 years at this point, either in their business or in businesses that they've brought me along to after they've been crawling up their career ladder. So yeah, those real client partnerships are, are inspiring to me. I, What's a valuable for my little structure here? So what is the difference between a 10-year client and a one-year client? Because so many agencies, and I, I, I told you like in the preamble, one thing I noticed in the subscription era is that the lifetime cycle of clients shrunk dramatically to a 10th in the license era. We're both old enough to remember what it used to be like, and you've obviously been successful at having 10-year clients. So what is the difference between a 10-year client and a one-year client? I do have a sh my share of one-year clients, and, and I would say my, my, my short-term, my one-year clients are clients that are incapable of a adopting to new systems or relying on partnerships, my partnership to continue down their path. Theoretically, I don't mind bringing on a client, building a system for them, getting them started and then training them and giving them the keys and moving on. And that might take a year, maybe a year and a half, but it, it doesn't always work that way. And the long-term clients are the ones that we really have been able to sh demonstrate ROI. Right. Like you could just run reports and you can see exactly what we've been doing and you can look at the reports and you can look at the data and say, this is where we were and this is what we're doing. Let's stay on the, stay on the path here. I think that's the, it, right? It is a chaos or order. And really what I've learned is clients are always anxious. You're not, it doesn't matter what kind of contract you're, whether you're doing digital marketing or auto mechanic or physician or a nail salon before a wedding, all you're trying to do is 
bring things under control for that client and calm them down because they're always anxious. Yeah. That's what you're delivering. And if you can continue showing, yep, everything's under control, return on investment because you're a marketing agency, then you're winning. So cool. to get back on track, your digital agency, obviously you started off not, you learned your digital as you went along. So I'm interested in your perspective and you've been in it for 20 years. Who has been, of all the digital tech companies or ad platforms, whatever, what has been your best experience so far as an agency, as a partner or as a platform to work with and why? So a long time ago, when I, 15 years ago, when we started doing email marketing along with web design and, and email marketing, because that was a big technology at the time, I ended up partnering with a company that, that just wasn't, that didn't pan out. They, they, they didn't realize the potential I thought they were. I thought they were going to be huge. And it was like, all right, I'm all in. Let's get all my clients on this email marketing platform. And they just, they got acquired. They just fizzled out like that. It was just not, it was a poorly run company for the most part, I think. About, I don't know, five or six years ago, I partnered with HubSpot. I did a lot of research and I, I needed a marketing platform partnership that would give me the foundation for not having to reinvent the wheel every time I engage with a, with a client, whether it was just web design or if it was web design and more and ongoing marketing or whether it was taking over a marketing effort they were doing. I, I did a lot of research into the field and I decided, especially after my previous experience, that HubSpot was a, a good choice. They're not for everybody, but for me, for my business, they were a really good choice. They're the biggest player in the field. They have the most resources. I knew there was going to be a lot of stability. I didn't have the feeling that they were poorly managed. I was impressed with their management and I really appreciated their partner program because as a small agency, you know, that's a huge investment of my time and money to invest in, in a partnership with a software company. So I went with, I, I chose HubSpot and it, it's been great. It's been great for me. It's really stabilized my business. Not only am I getting the resources out of them, the technical resources and the and, and methodology, but I've been learning how to do sales better. I've been learning how to run my business better. I've been learning how to grow my business in ways that I didn't really think about. So it's really nice to have this larger community that that I could rely on, I think, for, for the kind of input that I don't necessarily have as a solopreneur with no partners, no other people in my business. That's been really successful. I, I appreciate it. There, there are challenges with HubSpot for sure, with any partnership, Sure, but it's been, it's really transformed my business and, and I'm really grateful. For I mean, they're just people uh, over there, but what they've done as a company, I, I say that actually I'm wearing my inbound shirt today. Yes. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> but what they've done, what I've always appreciated about HubSpot is they've viewed the agencies as people as well, which so many software companies don't. They just view you as dollars. And HubSpot does invest time with you about your business I've, in a way that is industry leading. I mean, before that, but the only other company I know who's done that is Moz, I suppose, the SEO community. And they, I'm sure there are others, but like HubSpot and inbound.org and all their training about how to even be, what, what is an inbound marketing agency and how, what does that even mean? Like their blog is amazing and the, the yeah. events are amazing. I agree. So would you say that's like the main characteristic, like how they've helped you understand what your business is supposed to be as a business owner or is, has it, have they done delivered other value? The product, yes, but like beyond that. The product for sure. And as the product evolves, I'm adding new business services along. So now everything's about the CRM and the sales tool and, and the content management system. And these things didn't really exist even five years ago when I started my partnership. It's helping me expand my services and become more valuable to my clients. But it's also the community, the HubSpot community, you and I met through HubSpot and I've made a lot of my friends, I, I know just through the community, um, maybe I've never seen them in person, especially over the last couple of years, but like I'm, I, I, I do appreciate the humanity behind the company. I sometimes I feel like a number to them, especially because I'm not a super elite d double diamond sapphire partner. But I'm kind of just hanging on to keep my, my, my tiered partnership with them because my model is not to just sell as much HubSpot as I can. Although I think they'd like that, but I think they also understand that 
are, we have an overlap of shared goals, but some of my goals are not theirs and some of their goals are not mine and it still works. That's the thing. You're, you are a separate business and they are a separate business from you, but to make a partnership work, like any relationship, it's like any relationship. You're basically, I'm going to say you're married, but it's like that. They have their needs. You're not going to be, you're not the best agency from their point of view, but they still invest in you because they care about you to appropriate levels, hopefully. And then in return, you have your own business and your own needs. They've also helped you grow as and think about new stuff. So yeah. that's, that's what it's so amazing about. I don't know. I can gush about HubSpot all day long. You can complain about it too. It's like people, but it's been such an interesting, it's such an interesting ecosystem. Probably, definitely industry leading, like they're the leaders easily for good reason. But let's, yeah. let's turn around. Let's get some, add some drama. Yeah. No, but who's been the worst experience? You must have worked with lots of partners. Yeah, you don't have to name and shade, but I'm curious, like what kind of digital platform or tool has really given you a hard time as an agency to bring it, things under control for you? Yeah, boy, there's a lot of them because there's a lot of software companies out there and it is doubling every year. It seems like to me early on, like I mentioned, I was with, I partnered, my, my first partnership was with an email service provider and that was not a great experience. I thought it was going to be a great experience. And then I watched all their competition just blow them away with features and service and partnerships. And pretty soon they just, they just floundered. And I, I just, I couldn't, and then I, I literally had to get my clients off that platform at my cost because I just didn't want to work with them anymore. Oh, God, and that yeah. was, yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. So. The other ones that, you know, I come across companies all the time now. I would say <laughs> I've contacted several times a day by companies that want to partner with me. We, you're an agency and we make software and we want to partner with you. And I know they're using automation and I'm getting these robot emails from them. I know what they're doing and I can tell that it, there's not a lot of humanity there. There's not a lot of commitment on their part to help me grow or to do, or to provide me with anything I really need. And even though I've come across a few platforms here and there, they're, you know, they're like, oh, that's good. That's good functionality. And I think it's going to dovetail well with what my clients need. Ultimately, I may not even partner with them. We'll just get one account going and I'll just move on because I just don't, I don't feel like they're committed to in ways that I've come to expect through my relationship. That's fine. I did just start a new, going back, I don't know, man. I, I can complain all day long, but I, don't, Wait. I guess you do want to hear it. I just started working with Lead Feeder and they're oh, yeah. awesome. Like they've been really good to work with. I just started a partnership with them and it dovetails really well with what I'm doing in HubSpot for a lot of my clients. And just this week I had some really good calls with them and we got one project off the ground. And I, So what made, what made it work? Like why were they so great? I got the sense that they understood my business and my goals and made it clear that they had a good tool that when appropriate would help me do my job better. And I felt like they were listening to my needs as well as just telling me to sell software. I have access to them. I don't, they're easy to get in touch with. They're very helpful. They're willing to jump on demonstrations with me and sales calls with me and help me figure out how to sell better. And then that's just started, but that was nice because I, I come across some other companies, maybe not their competitors, but certainly maybe some HubSpot competitors that are always knocking on the door. And I just, I just get a bad feeling. I get a bad feeling from having that introductory phone call with them. I'm just, yeah, you guys are just this. You don't understand that you don't understand my business and you don't really care to. They I probably, if they just want you to sell their software, they don't care anything about your needs. They don't. Yeah. No, I'll tell you a, a story about me because I should be interviewing you, but it's, 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 I did this on purpose and this leads to the last question. My, my original headline for AppLine, I knew it was wrong, but I just wanted to throw it out there because I, I wanted people to get angry because I wanted to hear what it was like because I'm, <laughs> I'm a troll. I'm a troll. So I, my original headline on the homepage was buy software and sell it to your clients, which is absolutely what everyone, every SaaS company is pitching and is absolutely the wrong message. I just, I cornered somebody at one of my cocktail parties at Dreamforce. Remember, it was probably right. inappropriate that I cornered him, but I bought him a drink. That's, that's, that's okay. Yeah, who's friends of mine? It's fine. And the, it's like, <laughs> what's wrong with this message? And it's like, I, 
no, there was no value in it. It was all risk. And I just feel so many of the software companies are just trying to push risk down in, into your throat if, so they can make their quota. And they're so afraid of you at the same time, which is why they're not even listening to you because they don't know you at all. And they have the reason why is they've been risk has been pushed down to them from the CX suite and make more money. And I, I don't know anything about these people. Do it now. And they just view you as the customer channel because they're so used to direct. So my last question, maybe you already answered it with lead feeder, but like, actually maybe you have, but if someone's, if you have, you have to give advice to a software company to emulate lead feeder and be better, how could they improve in, 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 in talking with you rather than at you? Yeah, that's a good question. I can answer that with lead feeder, but I think like in a nutshell, if I'm talking to a salesperson about a partnership, it's not going to work. They're working on quotas. They're working on sales. They just want me to sell for them. They're looking for a pyramid, somewhat of a pyramid situation. If I'm talking to somebody who maybe doesn't have skin in the game, as far as sales goes, maybe they all do, but they don't, it doesn't feel like it to me. They're literally a, you know, a, a partner manager. I think that's going to be a lot more successful. I feel like with HubSpot and, and with lead feeder, I think my partner contacts are more concerned about my success as a business and how their tool fits into it than they are about selling units, um, selling subscriptions. And, and I think that would be my suggestion. If you're going to try to build a partnership program, treat your partners like clients, solve their needs, listen to what they need and solve their problems. Amazing. So how do we get a hold of you? Thank you very much for doing this. So how do we get in touch? Of course. My website is bindergroup.com, B-Y-N-D-E-R.com, group.com. Sorry. You can find me on LinkedIn at Rob Binder. I'm one of the only B-Y-N-D-E-Rs in the country or in the world for that matter. And you could email me at rob at bindergroup.com. Amazing. Thank you so much for being so candid. And I love that you had such a long history coming in from visuals into tech because that is the journey that i've been on similarly not quite visual but a similar journey and it's nice to talk to someone who has experienced it alongside with me as well so thank you but well, thanks for having me senior i really appreciate it it's, it's great to talk with you too for more great insights on partnerships and software like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video